Hello students, welcome back to the class. In the last class we have discussed about different aspects of statistics and we have solved few sums too. Now today we are going to solve some more sums with the same concept. So let us start our exercise 14.2 and we start with question number 6 now. Now question number 6 says 3 coins were tossed 30 times simultaneously. Each time the number of heads occurring was noted down as follows and few numbers are given here from 0, 1, 2 and 3. These are the range of the numbers and then they asked prepare a frequency distribution table for the data given above. So let us do, let us solve the sum. So students this is the solution of question number 6. Now in the first column that is the number of heads occurring we have written these numbers these are the numbers possible numbers of heads occurring. So one row for zero then one then two and then three. Now looking at the numbers given to us we see that zero is occurring one two three four five and six times. So the frequency will be six then one is occurring similar way ten times. So the frequency is 10, 2 is occurring 9 times, so the frequency will be 9 and 3 is occurring 5 times, so the frequency is 5 and then total is 30. So this is the frequency distribution table of the data given to us in question number 6. I hope it is clear to you all. Our next question is number 7. The question is the value of pi up to 50 decimal places is given below. It is 3.14159265353 and so on. First bit as make a frequency distribution table of the digits from 0 to 9 after the decimal point. And second bit what are the most and the least frequently occurring digits. Now let us solve it. So now the solution of question number 7 which I have done on the board. Please see. The different digits given to us were from 0 to 9. So the first column consists of all the digits. Now second column I have marked it as tally and the next one as frequency. Now the first number is 0. Now in the entire process where all 50 numbers are given to us, 0 is occurring only twice. So the frequency is 2, so tally will be 2. Then number 1 or digit 1 which is occurring only 5 times, so the tally is 5 and the frequency is also 5. Similarly 2 is also occurring 5 times, so frequency will be 5 and this is the tally for that. Then 3 is occurring 8 times, so this will be the tally. Similarly for 4 then 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and we will always check that the total is 50. So the first bit says make a frequency distribution table and here it is so. Second bit says what are the most and the least frequently occurring digits. Now let us see here in the frequency column. The number which is occurring mostly is the highest number 8 which indicates that and this is appearing twice. This means the number 3 is occurring maximum number of times. Also the number 9 occurring maximum number of times. And the least among all of them is the number 2. So we can come to the conclusion that 0 is occurring least number of times. So we can say that 3 and 9 are occurring most and 0 is occurring least number of times. Is it okay? Next is question number 8 which says 30 children were asked about the number of hours they watched TV programs in the previous week. The results were found as follows. Some numbers are given to us starting from 1, 6, 2, 3, 5, 12 and so on. Then at the end we are having two bits asking first one 
make a grouped frequency distribution table for this data taking class width 5 and one of the class intervals as 5 to 10. Second bit, how many children watched television for 15 or more hours a week? Now let us solve it. So here is the solution of question number 8. Let us see it in the board. They have asked us to do a grouped frequency distribution table. For that, we have made the class interval as follows. First is 0 to 5 as mentioned in the question that the width should be of 5. Then next is 5 to 10, then 10 to 15 and then 15 to 20 to cover all the numbers given to us. Now let us see the next column that is tally and then the frequency. Now we see that in the range 0 to 5 that means the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 we have total 10 numbers in between 0 and 4. So the tally is same here 10. Then in the range 5 to 10 which includes 5 but not 10 we have 13 numbers so this is our tally. Then the next that is the third column we are having 10 to 15 and we are having total 5 frequency. So the tally is this and the last one that is in the range 15 to 20 we have 2 children. So the tally is this and the frequency is 2. Once again we check that the total is 30. So bit 1 says to make a grouped frequency distribution table for this data and here it is. Second says how many children watched television for 15 or more hours a week. Let us see it from the table. Now since we were asked that the number of hours will be 15 or more. So we go to the class 15 to 20. That means the children who are watching television for more than 15 hours are in this range and we are having 2 as the frequency. So we can come to the conclusion that 2 children watched television for 15 hours or more in a week. I hope it is clear to all. Now we come to the last question of our exercise 14.2 number 9. This question says a company manufactures car batteries of a particular type and the lives of 40 such batteries were recorded as follows. Then some numbers are given to us as the lives in years of the batteries. And then it is asked that construct a grouped frequency distribution table for this data using class intervals of size 0 0.5 starting from the interval 2 to 2.5. So let us solve it. So here is the solution of question number 9. Let us see. They have asked us to construct a grouped frequency distribution table with the interval 2 to 2.5. So the lives are as follows 2.0 to 2.5, 2.5 to 3.0, 3.0 to 3.5 and so on. Last one 4.5 to 5.0 to include all the numbers given to us. Next column is tally, then we have the frequency. Just check the points in between 2.0 to 2.5 we are having two such numbers. So the frequency is 2 and the tally is only two lines. Next 2.5 to 3.0 we are having six numbers. So the frequency will be 6 and the tally will be 1, 2, 3, 4. We cut it to make it 5 then 6. Next 3.0 to 3.5 we have 14 such numbers so the frequency is 14 and this will be your tally. Then in the next one 3.5 to 4.0 we have 11 such numbers so frequency is 11. Then in the next one that is 4.0 to 4.5 our frequency is 4 and in the last one 4.5 to 5.0 our frequency is 3. Here also we check that the total is 40. So this is the solution of question number 9 which says to construct a grouped frequency distribution table. I hope this is clear to you. Next one we are going to discuss the graphical representation of data. 
It is well said that one picture is always better than a thousand words. So we have seen that statistics is being drawn either in the tabular form or in the graphical form. But many people find it difficult to understand it from the tabular form, which will be easier when we draw the graph of the chapter. Okay. Now, usually comparisons among the individual items are best shown by means of graph. Now, we shall study the following graphical representation in this section. There are three parts. One is the bar graph, then we have histogram and next is the frequency polygon. So, we come to the bar graph first. So, in earlier classes, you have already studied and constructed bar graphs. Here, we shall discuss them through a more formal approach. Recall that a bar graph is a pictorial representation of data in which usually bar of uniform width are drawn with equal spacing between them. We take an example here. In a particular section of class 9, 40 students were asked about the months of their birth and the following graph was prepared for the data so obtained. Look at the graph here. Along with the horizontal line, we have written months of birth and along with the vertical lines, we have written number of students. Check in the block January, we have three students. So it is marked along with the line 3 and in the month February, we have 4 students. So we have made the bar graph up to the line 4. In the month March, we have 2 students. In April, we have 2 students. So we have made 2 bar graphs along with the line 2. Then in May, we have 5 students. In June, 1 student and July, 2 students and similarly, all the months were covered. Now look at the figure. It is easy to understand from here that in December, we have four students. In November, we have four students. In October, four students. September, three students. August, six students and so on. So from the graph only, the data is being clear for all of us. Students, please check at the end of the graph, some questions are given. And they are as follows. How many students were born in the month of November? Now look at the graph and you can easily find out from the graph that in the month of November, four students were born. Second question says, in which month were the maximum number of students born? So you can see the bar, which is the tallest one is going to give you the answer for this. And it is the month August which is giving number 6. So we can come to the conclusion that in August, 6 students were born. Next one is histogram. Now histogram is a form of representation like the bar graph, but it is used for continuous class intervals. For instance, consider the frequency distribution table 14.6 representing the weights of 36 students of a class. Now the table is given here, you please see in the screen. One column is the weights in kgs and they are written as 30.5 to 35.5. Next row 35.5 to 40.5 and then 40.5 to 45.5 and so on it continues till the last one 55.5 to 60.5. And on the other side we have the frequency which is the number of students and they are 9, 6, 15, 3, 1, 2 and the total is 36. Now look at the graph that is the histogram for this. Along with the horizontal line, we have written the weights in kg and along with the vertical line, we have written the number of students which is our frequency and we start writing the limits. They are 30.5, 35.5, 40.5 and so on and the last one is 60.5. Now here since the class width is 5 in each cases, so the difference is between each one is equal that is called the width of the class they are same. But in the beginning it is 0 to 30.5. 
So for that we draw a zigzag line in the beginning and in the first column we are having 30.5 and 35.5 our frequency was 9. So along with 9 we draw a line on top of the class width 30.5 to 35.5. Then in the next class width that is 35.5 to 40.5 the frequency was 6. So we draw a straight line on top of that and then in the next interval similarly 40.5 to 45.5 we draw the class interval on top of the width and so on we go on doing them for all the class width and finally our figure is made. This is called our histogram. So the difference between bar diagram and histogram is that there is no difference between the class intervals okay so here we have done the last sum on histogram where all the class width were equal but it may not be so in every time so we come to the next one that is example 7 of the book please see it in the figure the class intervals are marked as 0 to 20 so the class width is 20 here next is 20 to 30 class width is 10 30 to 40 class width 10 40 to 50 again class width 10 then 50 to 60 class width 10 60 to 70 is 10 then 70 to above here we are not having the upper limit but in the figure you see they have written 70 to 80 that means the class width is of 30 and the frequencies are given normally they are 7 10 10 20 20 15 and 8 and the total is 90. Now look at the figure, look at the histogram, they are all same. So there is no width difference between the figure. The first one is indicating 0 to 20 that is of width 20. Then we are having all the classes up to 70 of width 10 and the last one is of width 30. Now let us see the table first. How to make such table? For that look at the screen. We are having the class interval which is marked as marks. We are having the same one as in the question that is 0 to 20, then 20 to 30, 30 to 40 so on but the last one is 70 to 100. Next column we are having frequency. Here also we have the same numbers as was given in the question. Then we are having Another column which says the width of the class. Now the first one is 20, then 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 and the last one is 30. Now according to this we change the frequency for this graph and that column is marked as length of the rectangle. The calculation is such we have to write the frequency on top that will be divided by the class width that is 20. And that will be multiplied by 10 which is the common width for all of them. So the result is 3.5. For the next column also we have to go on doing the same one but since the width is 10 so this will be 10 by 10 into 10 result will be 10. Third one is also same 10 by 10 into 10 so the result will also be same but the last one just check the frequency is 8. And since the class width is 30, so 8 will be divided by 30 and then will be multiplied by 10 to get the normal frequency 2.67. And according to this frequency, we draw the histogram. Now look at the histogram once again. See in the figure, in the first column that is from 0 to 20, we have the frequency 3.5. And in the column 20 to 30, our frequency is marked as 10. Then 30 to 40 it is marked as 10 and so on. And then the last one that is in the column 70 to 80. The frequency is marked as 2.67. Is it okay? Clear? Now we come to the last part of our graphical representation of data. That is your frequency polygon. Now one example that we have already done in case of histogram. I think you all remember the figure there the class interval was 
30.5 to 35.5 then 35.5 to 40.5 and so on and accordingly frequencies were given as 9, 6, 14 and so on. Now the histogram is already being drawn, you have already drawn, you have learned how to draw. On the same figure I am doing, see here in the first bar that is on top of 30.5 to 35.5 we marked the middle point as B and similarly in the next bar on top of 35.5 to 40.5 we mark the middle one as C and in the third bar we mark the middle one as D and similarly E, F and G. But the two end points since the limit was starting from 30.5 so we go one more that is beyond the limits on both the sides. So in the beginning it will be one more column with 25.5 to 30.5 and at the end it will be 60.5 to 65.5 and we mark their middle points as the points A and H and now we join all these points that is A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. After joining these points we rub this part that is the part which is being drawn as a histogram. We are left with the straight lines joining the middle parts of all the bars. This one is called your frequency polygon. I hope it is clear to you all. So students there are some more examples in the book which are of the similar type. So I hope you can do it yourself. So let us move to the exercises now. Let us go for exercise 14.3 question number 1. It says a survey conducted by an organization for the cause of illness and death among the women between the ages 15 to 44 in years worldwide. There are some causes written and along with it their number that is the frequencies are written which is for female fatality rate. Now the question they have asked is represent the information given above graphically and then which condition is the major cause of women's ill health and death worldwide. Now let me draw the figure for this and we will discuss the solution. So here is the solution for question number 1. The serial number 1 that represents reproductive health conditions and the percentage is 31.8. Here I have written 1 which represents the reproductive health conditions and along with it we have drawn a bar graph up to the point 31.8. So the last one is 31.8 we have drawn the bar graph on it. Our second point is neuropsychiatric condition and the percentage for that is 25.4. So for number 2 we have drawn the graph up to the point 25.4. And then came down on the last limit of 2. Number 3 is injuries and the percentage is 12.4. So along with the number 3 we have drawn the line up to the point 12.4 along the vertical line. So this is our bar diagram for number 3. And the number 4 is cardiovascular conditions and the percentage is 4.3. So on top of 4 the line will go up to the point 4.3 along this vertical line and will come down here. Number 5 is respiratory conditions and the percentage is 4.1. So along with on top of the number 5 the point will move up to the point 4.1 along the vertical line and then will come down at the end point of 5. And the last one is other causes and the percentage was 22.0. So the point is 22 along with the vertical line and we came down. But remember all this width will be same also the gaps will also be same. This is the solution or this is the bar diagram for this. Now let us discuss the bit 2 of the question which says that which condition is the major cause of women's ill health and death worldwide. Now look at the figure. The number which is on top of the bar is the highest one will be the answer for this. On top of bar 1 we are having the bar up to the point 31.8 point 
which is the highest in all of them. We can see clearly from the figure. So this will be the answer for bit 2. So this much is for today's class. I hope the sums that we have done today are clear to all of you. Let us see you all again in the next class with some more new concepts of statistics. Till then, take care. Bye and thank you.